Welcome to the spiritual and karmic aspects of the vegetarian diet by Sant Kirpal Singh and Baba Savan Singh vegetarian part 1 of 2 on words of wisdom. Baba Savan Singh ji was an Indian saint and enlightened master. Born in 1858, he was a bright and virtuous youth whose studies in engineering led him to be a successful subdivisional officer in the government. From an early age, Sardar Savan Singh ji poured over the scriptures of various religions, met pilgrims, and constantly yearned for God. A holy Sufi ascetic named Baba Kahan predicted that a master would find him to give him initiation. Indeed, the venerated Baba Jaimal Singh ji, also known as Baba Ji Maharaj, came to find his new disciple, Sardar Savan Singh ji, eventually became Baba Ji's successor and the second Satguru of Radha Swami Satsang Bias from 1903 until 1948. while promoting brotherhood and equality in a turbulent society through his many loving actions baba savan singh ji spiritually awakened many people through imparting the practice of surat shabd yoga today he is still loved and venerated as the great master Sant Kripal Singh ji Maharaj was a disciple of the well-known master of Bias Hazur Maharaj Savan Singh ji they met in 1924 in the ashram of Baba Savan Singh ji on the banks of the Bias river in the master Kripal Singh ji recognized the luminous form he had seen during the seven previous years in his meditation hazur maharaj savan singh ji initiated him into the spiritual discipline of surat shabd yog and from then on kirpal singh ji dedicated his life to reaching the summits of spirituality Today we have the opportunity to read a selection from a book authored by Sant Kirpal Singh ji Maharaj and his beloved master Baba Savan Singh ji entitled The Spiritual and Karmic Aspect of the Vegetarian Diet. This book comes as a gift from God to clarify and direct the right way of living concerning eating habits of a truth seeker with food being a major part of our lives the spiritual aspect of the vegetarian diet regarding laxity in the prescribed diet i wish to say to all aspirants on the path that it is necessary so long as one is in the physical body that vegetarianism should be strictly adhered to any relaxation in the matter of diet would not only be a definite hindrance in meditation but would unnecessarily contract karmic reaction the real goal is to use every means possible to rise into full god consciousness Sant Kirpal Singh ji Maharaj vegetarian Everyone seeks rest and peace but they remain as elusive as ever All our efforts in this direction come to naught and prove fruitless Why because we work on the wrong lines man lives on two planes the outer and the inner first we have to settle things outside before we can enter within to bring peace on the outer plane mm-hmm. 
there are three factors that count a great deal in this connection. Right occupation, right conduct, right diet. The greatest purpose of human life is that one should know one's self and know God and all the rest is mere dissipation. Sound mind in a sound body is a well-known aphorism. One has, therefore, to work for these before anything else. We have to keep both body and mind in a healthy condition before these can be used as instruments for spiritual advancement. For this, we have of necessity to resort to food. We cannot do without food for keeping the body and soul together. Our first and foremost problem then is food, for food conditions body as well as mind. Right type of food, rightly earned, rightly taken, helps a lot in this direction. One must, therefore, earn his daily bread by the sweat of his brow, as the saying goes, and should not depend on others' earnings. We must, for our livelihood, engage in some honest and useful pursuit, may be physical or mental, but it must be free from all guile, hypocrisy, ill will, and animosity, for karmic law is inexorable in its working. Every action leads to reaction and thus the endless series rolls on interminably. Hence, the need for an honest living, howsoever poor it may be. Riches grow by the groans of the poor and the downtrodden, the hewers of wood and the drawers of water, and thrive on the livelihood of our fellow beings. We ought not, therefore, run after rich foods and dainty dishes, for these bring in their train much blood-sucking and are tainted with the untold miseries of the lowly and, in the long run, make us miserable as well. All of us are being consumed in the invisible fires of hell, and yet know it not. Food, as you know, is made for man and not man for food. We have to make the best use of food like all the other things of life. One who is a slave of the palate cannot do anything useful. By a righteous control of the palate, we can control our entire physical and mental systems. A simple diet is more nourishing and wholesome and conducive to spiritual advancement than all the so-called delicacies which the modern culinary art provides. It will always give a comfortable feeling and serenity of mind and help you to live within your means, however limited the same may be, without extending your hand before others. When I was about to retire after my long government service, I was asked by my chief if I would like to have an extension. But I politely declined the offer saying, I do not want any extension as I know how to arrange my affairs within the limited amount of my pension. We must partake a little below the saturation point of the appetite. When we get delicious foods, we are tempted to eat more than what is actually needed and the extra food taken instead of giving extra health and energy proves baneful. The food which is not digested properly and assimilated in the system causes colic pains and aches. Do not overload the motor of your stomach, else you fall an easy prey to nausea. A surfeit of even what is good does prove harmful at times. A moderation in victuals and wines helps in the growth of vital powers in man. 
in the Puranas, there is an allegory of the food god complaining to Lord Vishnu, the sustainer of the universe, that people misused him a great deal. To this, Lord Vishnu humorously replied, those who eat you too much, you must eat them up, for that is the only remedy. Fresh air is the most essential part in our food. One must intake long breaths, retain them a while, and then exhale them out fully so as to cast out all the impurities of the body. Besides this, one must drink a lot of pure water and take fruit juices to flush the system through and through to make one clean. But avoid all types of spirituous liquors and intoxicants for they render the mind and intellect morbid. Grains and fruits should form our normal and stable foods. Sheikh Sadi, a great mystic poet of Shiraz in Persia, always preached to divide the stomach into four compartments, two for filling with a limited quantity of simple diet, one for pure and clear water, while reserving one for the light of God. We read of an incident in the life of Hazrat Muhammad, the Prophet of Islam. One day a physician came unto him and offered him his services for the sick and ailing in the Umad, the Prophet's following. He remained there for about six months in idle indolence as none of the Prophet's followers fell ill. He approached the Prophet and asked for his permission to leave as no one there felt the need of his services. Hazrat Muhammad, with, with a gentle smile on his lips, said goodbye to the physician saying, So long as the congregation followed the instructions, there would be no chance of any of them falling sick, for they all lived by one panacea, to always eat a little less than what one may in his hunger, otherwise like to take, to lead a chaste life with honest earnings. Baba Jamal Singh Ji, a great master in his time, used to buy some loaves of bread or chapatis and wrap them in a piece of cloth and hang them on a branch of a tree. He would devote himself to meditation all the day long and when he would get up from his samadhi, he would take just one loaf of bread soak it in water and partake of it before going into meditation again. Whole wheat bread is a complete food in itself. We deprive it of vital elements by removing the husk and by grinding the kernel into white flour by power-driven mills and thus destroy the phosphorus and oil in the grains. I very often witnessed with my own eyes Hazur Baba Savan Singh's food which was always very simple and consisted of just a few wholesome items in very small quantities. All the saints live on a very frugal repast. So did Shams Tabrizi, a Muslim devote, and Swami Shiv Dayal Singh Ji, both of whom lived by the principle eat less and remain happy. with a life of simple food and high thinking coupled with high morals and chaste conduct one needs no tonics which glut the market in these days. The luxurious food not only upsets the motor of the stomach but leads to dire consequences that at times prove very dangerous. Very often Persons complain that they do not seem to progress on the path, but little do they realize that it is due to faulty diet and wrong living. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, we read, lived mostly on barley bread. Merciful viewers, we thank you for your kind presence for today's words of wisdom.